Good morning, I'm up here in the Desolation Wilderness, just outside of Tahoe. Got a two day trip planned, solo. I'm gonna do some uh, kind of some fishing and uh, what I'll call some peak begging. So I'm just gonna climb up to the top of a couple of peaks and do a route. I'll uh, show the map a couple of times as I go, uh, just so people can see what I'm doing. If you wanna repeat this. I'm gonna try something new. I'm filming this on my iPhone. Never done this before. Trying to go super lightweight for this trip. Got a tarp, a bivy. Really tried to dial the gear down. Still brought the fishing pole because, well, I got a fish. Um, but tried to go real lightweight. So I left the DSLR, DSLR at home. Uh, I'm gonna try out the, uh, the old iPhone. Behind me here is Echo Lake, where I started. It's very nice and pretty out today. It's supposed to get a little cooler and windier over the next day and a half. So that'll be nice. Looking forward to some nice weather and a uh, pretty good hike here. I'm walking now for a little over an hour and covered about two and a half miles. Really nice here in the shade. Fall is on its way. You can see all the little green plants are getting burned, yellowing. Temps at night are starting to get cooler. It's getting down into the 40s around here at night. So it should sleep really good. Nice and clear, probably some nice um, stars this evening. I keep going up here. It's been relatively flat in the first two and a half miles. I'm traveling on the north side of Echo Lake. And then there's a pretty good little climb here. It's about 800 feet, and a mile and a half or so. You get up to the top, and then you're kind of in the pretty area. Really, really nice today. So it's 11.30. Climbing now for two and a half hours. Just upper and lower Echo Lake. And then that should be Echo Peak right in front of me. I go follow the path this way and up. Been climbing for about the last 45 minutes. There's Echo Peak. And here's looking down into Tahoe. It's the south end of Tahoe. Very nice. Epic view today. Absolutely freaking lovely. Sorry for the wind, but I made it to the top of Echo Peak. Absolutely gorgeous. See Tahoe in the background. A bit of a drop off there, gotta be careful. Not a bad day hike. Got some people down there in the lake kayaking. Yep. Epic day. My little sandwich here, got the cheese, salami, try it out. Mm. That's good. Crackers got a good amount of salt. I don't know what brand they are, but they're really good. Gummy bears. I love gummy bears, yes I do. They're the best snack after lunch. There is Angora Peak there and there. Big one over there is Mount Talon. I'm not totally convinced I want to go to Angora Peak. There's a bit of a drop to get down there. I think I might just be happy going right here. Really cool ridge though. Well, I tried to get to the top of Angora Peak, but I got about halfway there on the scramble and thought, eh, this is a bit more than what I feel like doing right now. It's definitely a class three, you know, Maybe four in some spots. There's there's a slabby spot where I just didn't trust myself. I'm like, uh, I could do it, but I'm out here by myself. I try not to do anything too dumb. So um, it might be cool to come back with a partner. Now I'm headed back to the main trail and I'm gonna head towards Aloha. <clears throat> there's Ralston Peak, which is another option to try to summit. I'll see uh, how long it takes to get back kind of over by Aloha area and how much steam I got. I think it would add another two miles and like 800 feet of climb, I think, to do Ralston. So I do want to fish tonight. I want to try Aloha and some of the little smaller lakes and see what I get. And where'd the trail go? Well, I'm back on the main path to Aloha Lake. Whoops, I can't even walk. Um, it's 2.45. I 
I've done a little over 10 miles. I'm gonna keep walking. Probably takes another hour and a half probably to get to where my camp is, set up, do some fishing, um, and then see, see what I feel like doing in the morning. I gotta get some water. I'm down about a half a liter right now. Uh, last time I was up here, which was about two months ago, there was some snow and a little running river. So I don't know if that'll still be here or not. Uh, if not, it should be, mm, excuse me, to Aloha in about, mm, and I'd say an hour to fill up there for sure. On the north end of Lake of the Woods, and I'm climbing up, there's the lake. Definitely less and less trees as I go up higher. And another mile and a half or two, I should be to my home lake for tonight. It's 4.30 and I'm on the south end of Aloha Lake. I'm trying to figure out how to get to Wacko Lake. There's no direct path. There's this big uh, wall behind me. I can't really get around. It looks like I can go up and around. There's little lakes all over the place. No clear path. So it's fairly flat, easy off trail. It's just having to navigate. It's a little, little bit of fun. Uh, it's been a really great day. Uh, a little over 13 miles in for the day. So I feel like I've, you know, done a workout. I'd really like to try to fish. I don't know how big this wacko lake is going to be. Some of these smaller lakes look really shallow. I might take a side trip over to Aloha, which is a lot bigger. Yeah, I just gotta figure out how to get around this thing. I don't really want to go up and over. That looks like a lot of work. So, I'm getting tired. I've been going all day. It's warm out. It's a nice breeze, no bugs. So here's looking back on Aloha, kind of from the west side of it. Came from over there, a whole bunch of scrambling. Now I'm heading up this way. Hopefully once I get to the top of this ridge and drop over, then I will see Wacko Lake. A glorious sight, finally found the lake. I think I'm gonna go down somewhere over there. My goal is to get to the top of that tomorrow, at the Pyramid Peak. I'm either gonna take that Kular up, or if I'm probably smarter, I'll take that one right there and then loop around to the side and then go up because there's a hiking path. That's probably the much, much easier way. Then I'm going to traverse the ridge line and right over there it slopes down and comes back to the main hiking path. So I made it to my destination tonight. I'm uh, pretty darn tired. It's 5.47. Um, I have done enough today. According to my watch, let's see, what did I do? I've been moving for eight hours and 50 minutes. Did 14.86 miles, so let's say about 15. Ascended 2,976, descended 2,263. So that's that's a full day. That's almost 3,000 up and a little over 2,000 down. That's a, that's a solid day. So I. I am going to, um, I've got this little spot, it's not the best, it's pretty rocky around here. This is like, I like this because it's not rocky, it's got uh, dirt, pine duff. I have two really large trees here that kind of shield me from the wind. The wind is coming this way. I'm going to drop the tarp uh, real low in the back and then right here is going to be the front, it's going to be wide open. Uh, it'll be nice, I can see the sunrise come over the mountains. Um, yeah, great day. Awesome, awesome day. Looking forward to getting some food. I'm not super hungry, but I do need some water. Luckily, there's a small little lake down here, um, probably like 100 yards away, that uh, I can get some water going. So here's the final setup for tonight. Got the Catabatic Gear Briscombe Bivy in there with the Catabatic Gear 30 degree quilt. Got my pillow, Neo Air Xtherm pad. I went around, have all the lines on Pressix. I might put one more cord here just to make sure this side is good and strong because the wind, wind's kind of coming up and over that ridge and down here. 
set the back up a little bit lower than the front. Did that just with a stick. Um, sheds the wind pretty good. Looking forward to a nice night of sleep. It's supposed to get down around 45. So I got the water started and going. As you can see when you hike all day in the Sierras, when it's really dusty, your legs get pretty uh, dirty. So do your feet. So to keep them clean and try to avoid uh, you know, dirt acting like sandpaper on your feet, I'm gonna use my little tiny pack towel. Uh, just use some water, rinse them down, let them dry out. And once they're dried out, I have some like foot balm I put on. It's, um, what's the new one I'm trying? Oh, Badger Balm, Badger Foot Balm. Uh, so I'm gonna try that out and then uh, put on um, my pants because I'm getting cold. The other thing this is good for is like, this is, you don't want to go to bed like this necessarily because all this dirt's just going to get ground into your sleeping bag. So I've been trying to get rid of it before I get in the sleeping bag. Have my water warmed up. Time to put this in. I got what I'm calling Indian spice. It's got curry. It's got uh, garam masala. It's got some smoked salt in it. That's going to be really good. Uh, I've never tried this before. Uh, I try to make my meals as simple as possible in this one. I just dehydrated a bunch of rice some beans and lentils, and then just change the spices up. That way I didn't have to dehydrate three or four different things. It was one thing, one basically meal, but it's just three different spices. Um, so I bought a Indian, a garlic one, and then like a spicy one. It's got like smoked paprika, stuff like that. So um, yeah, it just makes dehydrating easier. I will do a dehydrating how-to video, uh, or at least how I do it, which is not very professional, but however I do it, I'll do a video of those uh, next time I do like a big four or five day long trip. I've had some comments if people want to see that type of stuff. So time to let this rehydrate. I've uh, been using this Hyperlite Mountain Gear uh, little boil in the bag thing. So this goes in here and then this is insulated. It's made of Dyneema. It's got like a 3M insulation material in it and um, keeps it warm. Uh, you can fold this over and clip it and then it's like a little hand sticks in here. You can hold it and eat out of it and uh, it works good. So just let it sit for 10, 15 minutes, do some other stuff around camp. Uh, I've been cleaning up my feet and uh, I'm gonna grab the maps and take a look at those for tomorrow while my food rehydrates. It's getting close to nine o'clock. It's pretty dark out. You can see some stars. Stay up a little bit longer, watch the stars and then go to bed early. Plan to get up at first light and uh, get some food going and then head out and uh, have fun. Good morning, I just woke up. It was super windy last night. I should have even hunkered the tarp down more. Um, it's pretty warm and comfy in the bivy, but still it's really windy. I think the tarp helped, but it's just blowing all over the place. So I thought I'm gonna get some breakfast going. About 7.30, I'm all packed up. I'm gonna grab some water and start heading that way and start heading up the mountain. Super nice out today. Nice and chilly compared to yesterday. Yesterday was Kind of warm and sunny today's overcast so far it'll probably get hot here soon though so here's where i'm at kind of stuck not sure which way to go i can go up this one but it looks like it flattens out right there I'm not sure if i can get past that so option two is this drainage right here which i can hear the water rushing but it looks a lot less steep then i can come up and either go up and around that way or go up and around that way hit the pipe hiking bat see which way is easier i think i'm going to go this direction you can see i've gotten a lot closer it looks to me that the easier way is going to be on the left-hand side. It looks like there's more handholds and more uh, less slab. Because that right there would be hard to do. Once I get up to the top and it's flat, I just circle around. It should be pretty simple. With the uh, gorgeous, gorgeous area here. I'm scrambling through these rocks. We passed about 25 minutes. It's nice it's overcast and not super sunny. I'm kind of glad I didn't do that other route. I think this is going to be a lot easier. Climbing up here. Looks like someone set up a tent. Flat spot. Not a bad view for a tent spot. So, there I am. Climbing up. Up, up, up we go. It looks steeper from the ground. I love this here. It's basically just a little simple slab work. There's lots of flat spots up here. You could easily camp. Like if you look behind me, like a big shelf. This waterfall is pretty. Like here comes the 
mildly tricky part to zigzag a little bit, but this is actually going a lot better than what I thought. I figured this was going to be like hands and knees, terrible scramble the whole time. So, lucking out. This is gorgeous. This is this cute little waterfall area. Now I just got to scramble up through this. That pine tree right in the middle there, that is where it gets flagging. We're going out for about an hour and a half. Uh, I got to refill water. This is probably the last stop I have. I'm going to be on a ridge for the next couple of hours once I get to the top of Pyramid Peak. Uh, so I got to fill up. I'm going to try to chug some water, maybe like a half a liter to a liter, to make sure all my stuff's full. Don't want to run out of water. Well, I've been side hilling it now for about an hour from the east to get here. And look what I found a trail. Trails are really cool, they make life easier. If you look in the distance, right kind of in the middle there, you can see the peak. Still got about another 900 feet of climbing to do though. I have reached the end of the trail and it's going to be a scramble to the top. <sighs> Woo! It was nice to have a trail though versus trying to scramble the whole way up here. It's real windy now. and I made the summit started this morning around is that like 7 30 yeah so it took a while about three hours to get up here um, the last uh, 200 feet is nothing but just a complete fun scramble with big boulders <sighs> behind this little rock wall right here and uh, it's nice and there's no wind as soon as I stand up it's like being in a hurricane this is the tallest point in the desolation wilderness There's where I slept last night. That's Aloha. Now there is a path. I think you want to cut through there. Go up around the outside of this dark part. Come up there and you can drop down into Mosquito Pass. I thought about doing that originally, but I still got so much more to go. And I'm exhausted. So I'll leave that for another day. It is challenging rock scrambling with this full-size pack on the bear can. So if we were to come back and do this, it's going to be with the day pack coming out of the camp from this side. Just to give you a sense of time, there's Pyramid Peak, and here's this little lake. It shows up on most maps. It took me about an hour and a half to come down from there. Very steep, very rocky, and it would take forever to get up this way. The other direction I took was much faster. The wind is just unrelenting. I'm hidden behind these two little trees, but it keeps coming in these big gusts. There's definitely a storm coming. I saw some guys up at the top of Pyramid Peak and they said the storm was coming in tonight. We got more, more wind. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep heading back down. I'll see how I feel when I get down. Um, I'd like to try to make it back to the car tonight, especially if the storm's coming in. I'm, I'm pretty roasty though. I checked the stats about five and a half hours. Um, five and a half hours I've done. Let me see here. What have I done in five and a half hours? Five and a half hours I've done 4.9 miles, which sounds like not that bad until you look at I went up 2,900 feet, I went down 2,200 feet. So that was a um, that was a very grueling, uh, you know, 4.9 miles. So I'm going to get some peanut M and M's. That'll save the day. I'm really not hungry. It's very strange. I got all kinds of good stuff in my bag and I'm just not feeling it. Um, I'm guzzling the water. I still feel real dry. My lips get all messed up when it's this windy, this dry, real sunny too. Anyways, I'm gonna stop complaining. Cause I'm not really complaining. I'm just describing the weather conditions. Peanut time. So the sit rep, still super windy. This is the same drainage right here. Uh, I went down to come up. Looks like the safest way. This is possible, but um, I could easily do it if I had like, some approach shoes on and no backpack. But for me, 
I don't feel like risking it, so I'm gonna take this way down. Victory, finally made it off the frickin' mountain. Super happy. I'm back down here and I am near No Name Lake, I think it's Pyramid Lake. Um, I have a decision to make. I can uh, stick around another day. I have to get up super early, like 4.30, and hike out in order to get um, home and get to um, get to work on time and stuff. So it's uh, once I get back to the trailhead, it's five miles. And from where I'm at to the trailhead is one hour, about. We'll probably go quicker than that. So it's about an hour and then another two and a half. So it's three and a half hours, it's 2.30. So I can be in the car by 6, home by 8, 8.30. They give me enough time to sleep and then go to work. So I'm leaning towards that. Um, I've kind of done and felt like I did what I needed to do. So I did Echo Peak, did Pyramid Peak. Um, I looked at these lakes. A lot of them are kind of man-made and super shallow. They're not real natural, especially Aloha. I'm pretty sure it's man-made. There's a dam, a uh, little like stone dam I had to cross. So I don't think, and they're really easily assessed. So it's not like this is gonna be hot fishing or anything. So I'm gonna um, start uh, motivating towards the end. If I find some kick-ass campsite, looks really good, and I'm really just get kaput in an hour, uh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll stick around. But for now, I think the plan is gonna be to kind of book it towards the car, and then get back, that way I have a good night's sleep and a good bed, and I'm fresh, and I avoid the uh, storm that's coming tomorrow. There's a possibility for like, rain in the morning, and then one to five inches of snow at night, is what one of the guys said, at, uh, or in the afternoon. So one of the guys said. So I just, with all this wind, something's getting blown in. Um, yeah, gotta get to work. You know, had a fun weekend. So far, I've done 3,000 up, 3,000 down, uh, in about six miles. So that's a that was a that's a day of work right there. It's about 4:20. The uh, wind does not let up. It's not too bad right here, but most spots it's really, really pretty bad. So I have about another half an hour of walking until I get to the trail, and it's five and a half miles back to the car. Uh, this is gonna be one of my last water stops here, I think, so I filled up pretty good. I think about uh, two liters, two and a half, something like that is what I got. It should be enough to get me back to the car with plenty extra. Um, I'm feeling it, I'm beat. I mean, I, I've been on the move now eight hours and 41 minutes. So that's a long, long day, especially by the time I get back to the car. Um, but I think it'd be one of those days where you know I'd look back on and go, wow, look what I did. That was a big day. I do you remember these days? You know, a lot more I remember more of these than I do the ones sitting on the couch, I'll tell you that. All right, change of plans. I'm gonna call it a day. I'm gonna sleep right here in this grassy spot. I think it's protected enough. There's some shrubbery and some rocks that I can put up a tent with a tarp. It'd be pretty comfy. The wind's coming from that way. You see 100 feet that way, there's a nice little lake. Might try to cast into it a couple of times. My goal is gonna to be to get up super early, like 4.45, and then try to pack up, and probably not even make breakfast, just like eat some bars on the way. It's about 6.15, ready to get going on some food here soon. Here's the tarp, set up kind of in a modified Adirondack wind shelter. The wind's coming from that direction or that way, so I'm pretty hunkered in there, you know. You can see the bivvies pretty flush. It looks like it's supposed to do a light rain tonight. I should shut the water pretty good. I got that tied up to a little tree. Uh, it's pretty good. And then this will flow down and kind of dribble off the front. Gives me plenty of area to get around in the morning and then hide my gear in the back. So excited to try this out. Just put the water on to heat up. For tonight's dinner, real similar to last night's, you can see there's some black beans, some corn, uh, a couple of peppers in there, a lot of uh, lentils and some brown rice. It's got garlic flavor. Pretty good dinner. I think I like the uh, Indian flavored one I did last night better, but the garlic's not too bad. Um, pretty mountains in the background. Pretty crazy to think I was up there, you know, five, six hours ago. I'm going to bed super early tonight. I'm zonked. My feet are pretty good. Um, I got one blister, so that's good. It's not too bad. It's on my left heel. Um, but... Yeah, lots of sleep tonight. Try to let myself recover, and then I really got to get up early. I checked the weather forecast, and it looks like it's like a 10 to 20% chance of rain starting at 4 a.m. Uh, up to like 9. And then at 11, it starts shifting over to like sleet, rain, then snow. 
So I'm definitely gonna try to get out of here and be back in the car by eight or nine in the morning, the latest. For dessert tonight, I got yogurt covered pretzels, one of my favorite. Um, the wind is kind of calmed down, maybe. As soon as I say that, then there's a huge gust. Um, it's, the temps are dropping quick. I mean, it's it's chilly out here now. Good morning, it's 4.40 in the morning. Just got up, gotta get back to the car, get to work. Um, it is flipping freezing out here. The wind is just very, very cold. It's cold wind. So I'm gonna pack up and just eat some a little bit of trail mix here. Try to get warmed up and then um, and head out of here. The sun won't be up for another hour and a half, so we got just a little jaunt to the trailhead. And then from the trailhead, it should be pretty easy to navigate. After about 25 minutes of bushwhacking, I finally found the trail. Super excited about that. It's full moon, or it was like a full moon one night ago, I think. So uh, tons of uh, daylight out, or tons of moonlight out. Um, now I got about five, five and a half miles back to the car. Time to go. Well, after 6.30, See the moon up there. Oh, this is a lovely little walk here. Some loose, uneven rock. But other than that, pretty nice. I'm uh, seven o'clock. That gives me about an hour to cover two miles. Get back to the car by eight. And I can get to the conference call I want to log into. So that'll be good. But right on time. My stomach's a little goofy. Oh uh, yeah. My stomach's a little goofy. I uh, tried these date bar things I got from the grocery store. And I'm not quite so sure I like those. There's something with dates in it. They're a little they're too sweet and I get this bad taste in my mouth for hours on end. So maybe I won't do those again. I'm feeling strong. They're a lot better today than I did yesterday. I think I just needed to sit down and relax. Yesterday, yesterday wore me out. It was a hard, hard day so anyways onwards and upwards we go it's right before eight o'clock i made it back to the main trailhead parking lot so i'm gonna end it here awesome trip i'll uh, do some recap plots when i get home